good evening all uh, uh today uh, presentation uh, uh we have mitochondria electron transport chain and atp synthesis uh before going into the detail of uh, uh, this topic we all uh, know that uh, why we take or plant produce uh, nutrients or they take food we can categorize these nutrients or food into three main categories fats polysaccharides proteins and why why we take or why plant take all these uh, nutrients because uh they need energy and energy is conserved in the form of atp molecule so this we will discuss since we are discussing eukaryotic cell uh then we know that eukaryotic cell has mitochondria for conservation of energy so uh, as we discussed that uh, three main category fat polysaccharides proteins uh, they degraded into macro uh, from macromolecules to to uh, uh, micromolecules into fatty acids monosaccharides we know amino acids and these uh, fa fatty acid further uh, these further uh, with the help of beta oxidation forms acetyl coenzyme a and as we know glucose breaks down with the process glycolysis then three carbon compound form pyruvate once co2 is released it becomes two carbon then this acetyl coenzyme enters in the tca cycle when it combines with oxaloacetate acid acetic acid then this is citrate then isocitrate then you know that this krebs cycle or tca cycle produce a uh, different reducing powers about this we will discuss later and now the protein protein uh, basic unit amino acids uh, suppose it's alpha keto glutarate the precursor of uh, some amino acids that enters in the krebs cycle and uh, if uh, we talk about alanine that enters through pyruvate so the logic of uh, putting this this slide is that whatever the uh, the type of food we take or animal take or plant produce they all converge to this important chakra or cycle that is tca cycle and since all basic uh, constituents they enter in this krebs cycle uh they produce two important uh molecules one is nad h h plus and f a d h 2 so all the food items all the nutrients what plant produce or we take they are reduced to these two molecules now what is the role of these molecules and objective uh, of uh, our uh, lecture is to understand about mitochondrial mitochondrial electron transport chain to understand mitochondrial electron transport chain and subsequently atp synthesis so you must focus on these two important molecule so what happens to nadh or fadh2 when they are formed through tc uh we know that uh, uh this tca this chakra takes nad plus and 
FAD and this produce NADH H plus and FADH2. Now these molecule get oxidized. Fine. And how they oxidize? They release their electron. As we know, release of electron is the oxidation and that moves to different complexes that we will uh, learn in the subsequent slides. And ultimately, these electron reduces half oxygen into uh, respiratory water. Now, here, the energy which is released is conserved in the form of ATP. This is the basic concept. And when they release its electron and two protons also released, when NADH or FADH release their electron, then they become their respective precursor. So now this FAD and F, uh, NAD and FAD molecules again participate in TCA cycle, whether the food is protein, whether the food is carbohydrate, and whether it's uh, fat, all will converge to this TCA to produce these two important molecules, which is the basis of the formation of ATP molecules. Now, uh, let's understand about one important term that is standard reduction potential that is designated uh, by E0. So, uh, as we uh, learned from the previous slide, that's NADH and FADH2. When they uh, uh, give their electron to different complexes, so when NADH gives its electron to complex one, then these complexes are static. They are the transmembrane multiprotein complexes which cannot move uh, from their place. So uh, we need some of the electron carrier which can uh, take electron from one complex to another. For that, we have between complex one and complex three UV quinone. It is also known as coenzyme Q and uh, uh, complex 3 and complex 4 we have another electron carrier that is cytochrome C and complex 2 also gives electron to UB quinone. So uh, standard uh, the role of the standard reduction potential reduction potential you can understand in simple term that ability of ability of gaining electron ability of gaining electron so if we see the complex one and complex three if anybody asks that the pot, uh, reduction potential of these complexes uh, you you write in uh, in in increasing order of their affinity to electron then complex one has less electron affinity to complex three and complex three to complex four and similarly to complex second so that's why this this arrangement of complexes this is on the basis of standard reduction potential that's why the complex one is losing electron and giving two uh, complex 2 because it has more reduction potential and complex 4 has reduction potential more than complex 3 then electron moves further then finally uh, two electron as we discussed in previous slide that forms respiratory water Fine. So this is the concept how electron electron or why electron travels from one complex to another. So there is a sequence of uh, moving electron from one place to uh, 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 other. So we can uh, we know that this whole process is taking place uh, 
uh, where this is taking place in mitochondria and this is the finger like structures of uh, inner mitochondrial membrane so just i am giving you the oh this is outer mitochondrial membrane this is inner mitochondrial membrane and this is the uh, uh, matrix and here we have uh, complexes so when we will zoom in and this is the atp synthase so if anybody asks that uh, uh, where is the uh, location of all the complex involved in the electron transport chain so you'll say that is in the inner mitochondrial membrane let's zoom it okay so uh, this is the so we see uh, here uh, this is uh, outer face of inner mitochondrial membrane this is inner mitochondrial membrane and this is the inner mitochondrial inner face of mitochondrial membrane so this is the arrangement of different complexes that we studied in the previous this is complex one this is complex three this is complex four this is complex second and this is atp synthase so uh, complex one complex three complex four complex second so uh, a fresh tca cycle took place here and it produced NADH and FADH2. So NADH will give its electron to complex 1 and FADH2 will give its electron to complex uh, complex 2. complex 2 so uh, this complex 1 uh, as we discussed it cannot give its electron directly to complex 3 so it has some uh, electron carrier this is ub quinone or coenzyme q and one uh, is cytochrome c so cytochrome C is present on the outer face of the inner mitochondrial membrane. This is the intermembrane space and this is uh, outer mitochondrial membrane. So uh, electron from complex 1, they are received by ubiquinone. So, and a dh2 is giving its electron so we can name this complex as uh, n a d h because n a d h is giving electron it is getting oxidized and ubiquinone or coenzyme q is accepting electron means it's getting reduced so uh, it will be UB quinone or coenzyme Q and DH is getting oxidized. The oxido ubiquinone is getting reduced. Oxido reductase complex one. Fine. No need to uh, memorize mechanically. There is a logic behind everything. The naming of this complex one depending upon the, uh, the the type of functioning they are performing. So complex one is helping in the oxidation of NADH and reduction of coenzyme Q or ubiquinone. Now from here, uh, now we can uh, name the second complex FADH2 this fadh2 giving its electron to 
coenzyme Q again the complex second will be FADH2 ubiquinone or coenzyme Q oxido reductase complex 2 this complex is also known as succinate dehydrogenase complex and this is the only enzyme of TCA cycle which is membrane bound and this is act as marker of mitochondria so let's name uh, we don't have space so uh, let's remove it uh, So now we name uh, the complex third. So complex third takes electron, uh, gives electron to, uh, that will create confusion. So let's remove it and we write only the important. Okay, cytochrome C is the electron carrier present on the outer face of the inner mitochondrial membrane so complex third and complex four name is based on uh, their performance so what complex third is doing it is helping in the oxidation of ubiquinone or coenzyme q or reduction of cytochrome c so electron from this moves to complex 3 and from complex 3 so uh, from here electron goes to complex 3 so ubiquinone or quinone or coenzyme q is getting oxidized and two electron are received by cytochrome c so here cytochrome c is getting reduced so name of this complex would be coenzyme q cytochrome c oxido reductase complex 3 fine now similarly cytochrome c gives ele electron to complex 4 and uh, this complex 4 is helping in the oxidation of cytochrome c that's why this complex is known as cytochrome c oxidase fine so this these electron as we discussed earlier reduce oxygen into respiratory water now important part is that you all can take the uh, screenshot if you like uh, because i am i am removing it uh, so you see uh, this complex is so uh, we'll discuss another aspect what will happen when what what will happen when when electron travel through these complexes okay uh, this is complex one, two, sorry, uh, three, uh, four. This is second. So NADH, NADH converts into NAD plus electron goes to ubiquinone then to this this we have already 
discussed fine so so far we have discussed this part half o2 uh, then it will form respiratory water so four protons will accumulate in the intermembrane space this is the intermembrane space and here protons are accumulated so four protons from complex 1 they are accumulated here and uh, fadh2 gives electron to ubiquinone fad h2 becomes fad becomes fad then again it participate in the tc cycle then electron goes to uh, the complex third these two electron then four protons again pumped out from matrix to intermembrane space and complex 4 again releases two protons so there is a accumulation of proton in the intermembrane space now what this uh, proton accumulation uh, will do as far as uh, atp synthesis is concerned let's move to another slide uh so that was uh, further what discussed by this uh, scientist peter michel uh, who got the nobel prize and he gave the chemio osmotic uh theory so this is the inner mitochondrial membrane this is the region of matrix and this is the inter membrane space uh this is intermembrane space protons from complexes have been expelled or pumped to intermembrane space and this side we have oh ion obviously so here we have proton concentration higher at this position towards matrix or inner side proton concentration is lesser where is the proton concentration is high their ph would be low and where proton concentration is less their ph would be high uh so uh in terms of uh, uh, chemistry uh, we can uh, say that uh, uh, this proton uh, difference across uh mitochondrial membrane in a mitochondrial membrane is known as proton gradient now pro proton gradient simple word me difference of proton concentration across membrane fine now uh, in terms of physics we can describe the same thing uh this is this membrane now got charged other side is negative and other side is positive so we can say there is a electric potential across membrane so when this chemical this this in terms of chemistry we can say it is a chemical potential generated due to proton gradient and in terms of charge separation that would be electric potential so a uh, chemical potential plus electric potential that will form 
इलेक्ट्रोकेमिकल पोटेंशियल फाइन फ्रेंड्स एंड दिस इलेक्ट्रोकेमिकल पोटेंशियल इज ऑल्सो नोन एज प्रोटोन मोटिव फोर्स दिस इज नोन एज पी एम एफ एंड दिस पी एम एफ इज इंपॉर्टेंट वेन ए टी पी मॉलिक्यूल्स आर फॉर्म सो दिस प्रोटोन मोटिव फोर्स इज एक्चुअली डू दी मोशन फॉर द प्रोटोन and uh so uh let's uh, what happened oops okay so so far we have seen that uh, proton motive force which is the important uh, uh aspect uh, stated by peter michel by which uh, electrons uh, uh, by which protons are involved in the synthesis of atp molecule so last word what he said that uh, in this case this is the atp synthase this is the enzyme involved in the synthesis of so protons across the membrane so proton and they go to the uh, they they went to the other side of the membrane because electron traveled and here is the oh i so protons cannot come back through these complexes they can only come back to the matrix only through this gate that is atp synthase then michel stated that when a uh, 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 energy which is uh, which is uh, uh, as, which is involved in the establishment of proton gradient across the membrane whenever that energy whenever this energy so they want to come back to the matrix so when this energy is relaxed then adp and pi molecule are condensed to form atp molecules this plus is that energy which is derived from proton motive force when it comes back through this particular gate so michel stated i repeat that uh, the the energy which is conserved in the formation of proton gradient across the mem membrane whenever relaxed then energy released is utilized for the formation of atp molecule uh uh when when uh, when proton comes back through the atp synthase that was the uh, theory of peter michel let's move to next slide so what is p uh, o ratio uh you will uh, come across this this term whenever you will read uh, good books of biochemistry or or uh, physiology p here uh, talks about production of atp molecules Mol molecules per uh, okay o stands for uh, reduction of oxygen atoms so what we observed so far that nadh half o2 this uh, will form nad plus and respiratory water now energy is released in this process is a exergonic process which is taken by adp and pi to produce atp molecule so how many uh, 
ATP molecules are produced. So uh, the uh, the constituent or the molecule through which we are producing uh, ATP molecules that is uh, NADH and FADH2. So actually this ratio is telling us that uh, how many ATP molecules are produced from NADH or FADH2 to reduce one atom of oxygen into respiratory water. So two electrons released. So far we have seen that they moves to different complexes. Fine. From complex one, we have seen it four protons, complex three, four protons, complex four, two protons. So total 10 protons are uh, accumulated in the inter mitochondrial space. Uh, then FADH2 gives electron to the complex uh, to, to ubiquinone. So uh, that, that is involvement of only these two complexes that is third and fourth. So proton accumulation from FAD, FADH2 would be six. So FADH2 will produce protons that would be six now for your knowledge or, or you you uh, might be knowing this that four protons are required for the production of one molecule atp fine so if we divide this four proton by four protons 10 protons by four protons six proton by then we will calculate the amount of ATP production. So that would be 2.5 ATP per oxygen reduced to respiratory water. So that is the P oblique O ratio of NADH. And the FADH2 ratio would be 1.5 ATP for FADH2. I hope uh, this part is clear to all of you because they, in, in competitive examination, they ask this question, uh, what is the relation of the P, uh, PO in terms of the energy production, in terms of the ADP per NADH oxidation or FADH2 oxidation. <clears throat> now let's move to uh, Another part. Now, uh, uh, some of the important inhibitors of electron transport chain. Uh, so, rotenone, and uh, the first is the rotenone that blocks complex one that that blocks electron flow from complex one to ubiquinone or coenzyme Q. So this is the block. Both the uh, inhibitors rotenor or amytal blocks complex 1. Antimycin block cytochrome uh, uh, cytochrome C1 to uh, cytochrome sorry uh, cytochrome A uh, sorry cytochrome B to cytochrome uh, C1. Here is the block of antimycin C of this is of complex third. Now CN, uh, cyanide, carbon monoxide, agide, they block the fourth complex that is uh, cytochrome C oxidase. So what these three inhibitors are doing, they are blocking electron flow. And what is happening? That oxygen is not 
reduced because of this or it's not getting reduced to H2O. Now, there is another term you will uh, uh, study that is uncouplers. So, uh, so first we should know what is what is the uh, uh, couplers or couple reaction. That is an important term. Uh, so, in uh, so as we see in the P P O ratio, that N A D H ultimately reduces uh, oxygen. So, let's understand first couple reaction. Fine. Uh, suppose we take uh, a compound that could be NAD or uh, FADH2 or NADH2. It's uh, releasing electron, proton. Then this electron ultimately reducing half O2 to respiratory water. Now, energy is released so this is due to this uh, uh, reaction so this reaction is axertonic and this released energy is taken by adp and inorganic phosphate to produce atp molecules so two reactions one is energetically favorable, one is not energetically favorable. When they combine, they can perform, uh, they, they, they can uh, uh, utilize the formation of ATP or, or some other reaction. So both reactions are supplementing each other. That is the couple reaction. So as we discussed here, this NADH plus oxygen, half oxygen, so it will be NAD and this. Fine. So energy release. This reaction is exergonic. Fine. This energy release is utilized by ADP and PI to produce ATP molecule. So this is an example of couple reaction where electron traveling or the reduction of oxygen to respiratory water is also associated with the production of ATP molecule. Now let's understand uh, uncouplers. So uh, as we discussed in the rotenone, amytol, what, what they were doing, uh, they were uh, blocking the electron flow thereby oxygen not getting reduced to respiratory water fine but proton accumulation was there fine so proton accumulation is there so ATP production will decline so P oblique O ratio will be less fine oxygen is not getting reduced but also atp molecule synthesis is also declining but in uncoupler case like dnp that is dinitrophenone and valinomycin and gramicidine gramicidine a so what it does so as we discuss the protons other side of the membrane so this dnp what it does it takes proton and throw in the other side of the membrane that means towards matrix so that doesn't allow the formation of proton gradient across the membrane so when there is no proton gradient there is no atp synthesis 
but electron will travel fast so the uh, question comes when we are applying dnp in the system uh, atp synthesis will take place or not obviously atp synthesis will not take place because that will not allow proton gradient to establish across the membrane and this this uh, role of uncouplers uh, 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 uncouplers in terms of uh, ATP uh, production uh, uh, that uh, give the weightage to the chemiosmotic hypothesis or theory of uh, uh, Michel because Michel said the proton gradient is important for the ATP production when we are giving the DNP and DNP is not allowing uh, proton gradient to establish so in a way DNP is giving uh, a, a weightage to the Michel hypothesis so uh, and and electron traveling to towards oxygen and respiratory water is formed so metabolic rate so you should remember two points uncouplers related to uncouplers that atp synthesis no oxygen reduction yes and here what was happening uh, ATP synthesis, yes, and uh, oxygen reduction was no. Fine. So metabolic rate due to the uh, role of inhibitors, uh, due to the role of uh, inhibitors, uh, this, uh, sorry, metabolic rate due to these inhibitors uh, was less. ATP production was less. ATP production with the uh, with the application of uh, a DNP that was uh, 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 no ATP production because no proton gradient across the membrane and oxygen. Uh, uh, but oxygen is getting reduced. So metabolic rate in this case would be high. I hope you will you will understand the role of the uh, uncouplers and uh, couple reaction and the uh, different inhibitors involved in the uh, blocking of electron uh, transport. Let's move to another slide. Okay, uh, there is a uh, as we know about cyanide that uh, there is a sudden death uh, in the in, in case of animal, but when we apply uh, this uh, cyanide to uh, some of the uh, plants of Arikesi, then uh, there is a uh, the exhibit uh, important uh, uh, resistant uh, resistance to 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 this cyanide. So as we know, this is the the complex uh, one. This is uh, uh, cytochrome. Uh, as we know the cytochrome oxidase this is the uh, alternate oxidase fine and this here is the ubiquinone and here uh, two protons are accumulated and two protons are involved this two two electrons this two electrons two electron will come to alternative oxidase and it will form respiratory water fine uh, so uh, we see uh, this uh, in 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 uh, uh, plants uh, uh, those 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 exhibit alternate oxidase or cyanide resistant pathway they only accumulate few protons which is not uh, 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 th that will form uh, in terms of uh, uh, ATP molecules, but not even one. So if we calculate it by, by 4, it will come around 0.5. So we will make it as good as 0. Uh, so here the, uh, the oxidase, this is alternate oxidase. Why we are saying oxidase? Because this alternate oxidase is acting as, acting as, uh, uh, alternate uh, is acting as cytochrome oxidase fine so uh, this is all about the alternate oxidase the application of this because most of the proton they are not able to produce uh, uh, ATP molecules so most of the energy in these plant uh, is lost as is lost 
most of the protein uh, most of the protons i am not okay now it's coming uh, is lost in the form of heat then uh, leaves of this plant since uh, heat generation is there they released aroma because some volatile compounds they release and they attract pollinators so this is the role of the plants of ericaceae uh, uh, since proton gradient is not formed ultimately nadh2 very quickly reducing the uh, oxygen to respiratory water and most of the energy of the electron is released in the form of heat and that uh, energy is uh, 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 releasing uh, volatile compounds which which gives a characteristic characteristic smell and that is sensed by the pollinators and that help in the pollination uh let's move to this is, this is all about the cytochrome that's the uh cyto this this is an important uh cytochrome resistant pathway few question in competition they ask in terms of the atp production would be zero uh or it it if they are more precise you can write the 0.5 or what is the application of the uh, cyanide resistant pathway okay now so far we have studied the different aspect i tried my best to or to, or to do justice so bring most of the important facts about uh, electron transport chain so now we can uh, take few questions uh, uh, so you will learn uh, you you can sense or uh, you you can uh, ac actually know that how much you have uh, learned about uh, this uh, electron transport chain uh, and subsequently formation of uh, atp uh, synthase uh, synthesis okay so first question is precise location of electron carrier cytochrome c in mitochondria uh, outer face of inner mitochondrial membrane so you remember that we made complex uh, one complex three this is so we made made this cytochrome c between complex 3 and complex 4 but that was the outer face of the inner mitochondrial membrane so this is the right answer now head of the atp synthase is located towards so uh, this is proton gradient this is the atp synthase enzyme and protons will come to matrix so this is the head so head is towards where that is towards matrix answer third is the correct one so let's uh, move to uh, okay, this we have done okay fine so uh, PO ratio for each uh, oops we are learning all these techniques um, okay so uh, P oblique O ratios for each mole of NADH and FADH2 so that would be obviously 2.5 and 1.5 respectively respectively because uh, one molecule of nadh accumulates 10 protons and fadh2 accumulates 6 proton one atp synthesis requires four protons so it will be 1.5 and it will be 2.5 that we have discussed how many protons are required for the production of one molecule of atp for total proton accumulation for a molecule uh, for one uh, it, this is not correctly uh, framed uh, per, per uh, nadh and fadh2 so uh, we are not asking here atp we are asking number of so answer is 10 and 6 so it would be this answer then next uh, 
okay dnp dinitrophenol applied to electron transport chain so as we discussed that it will increase the metabolic rate or also disturb the proton gradient so answer four would be correct fine uh, alternate oxidase uh, alternate uh, oxidase mediated cyanide resistant pathway will produce how many so as we discussed that due to this ox complex one was able to release only two protons or if we divide these two proton with the four protons so it will come 0.5 so it is as good as zero so answer would be zero uh, next okay depending upon the reduction potential okay this reduction potential rank following components of etc in order to increase affinity for uh, electrons so so you start this NAD has less electron affinity affinity so it will give electron to coenzyme Q then coenzyme has less electron affinity than it will give to cytochrome C fine then cytochrome C to cytochrome A so this would be the correct order okay uh, next question is amytyl inhibited electron transport chain will would produce how many atp molecules for one mole nad at this so complex one is inhibited by so that is not allowing ubiquinone that not allowing electron to go to the ubiquinone so at this point of time four protons protons have been pumped in the uh, intermembrane space so four protons divided by four protons it will be one proton one atp synthesis uh, next question the last one uh, in in our experiment uh, in our experiment sub mitochondrial particles of inner mitochondrial membrane are produced from sonication of sonication by which we get uh, the sonication is a technique in which we give the high frequency sound waves and that ruptures the uh, membranes so these membrane vesicles so that forms the uh, vesicles seal inside out so that inner membrane a space of mitochondria becomes the lumen of the semi mitochondrial uh, sub mitochondrial part particles addition of all the substrate of oxidative phosphorylation in excess smp are suspended uh, i think this is this is a uh, very very long question so uh, let's take one by one so this is uh, what this question is saying this is the inner mitochondrial membrane and it is uh, we did the sonication of that so this is the atp synthase fine so this inner membrane this is the inside towards matrix this is outside so this inner membrane sealed inside out that means whatever was inside will come outside so that vesicle will form like this so this is the vesicle and this has a tp synthase outside and so this is the sub uh, mitochondrial particle fine so we have come till here so that inner micro uh, intermembrane space of the mitochondria becomes the so this intermembrane space is the lumen fine now next uh, it's saying addition of all the substrate for oxidative phosphorylation so uh, here uh, everything is there nadh and all and all the complexes will be here uh, 
uh, let's use different color okay this is complex one complex three complex four so any dh2 we are giving this some mitochondrial any dh fine so and and last point is saying smp particles are suspended in the high ph so here is the fluid in which uh, the ph is high means h ions are less so uh, let's erase it fine uh, see what it's trying to say that this is the condition and here uh, pH is high though here is uh, this is uh, uh, lumen and pH is high means protons are less fine and protons are high this side so pH is high uh, and protons are less hmm I, I i i think i made this wrong uh this will be like this fine because this ph is high so here ph this h ion are accumulated because electron transport chain is allowing traveling of electron from nadh so when protons will come back from ATP synthase then ATP synthesis will increase so proton gradient is established to so here just whatever we studied they are making it reverse they are making inside the lumen so that that lumen you can uh, understand as inter mitochondrial space and outside this uh, this is the uh, 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 lesser this is the inside as we had in the matrix so elect uh, protons are coming back to the fluid and adp and pi are present here and they will form so answer would be atp synthesis will stop no atp synthesis will decrease no atp synthesis will increase so this would be the answer i hope uh, i i i did justice because there are many topics many terms related to the mitro uh, electron transport and atp synthesis uh, hope you uh, like this uh, uh, electron traveling thank you